My name is Bennett. And I'm Dawn. And this is Living My Alaska, the YouTube channel. And we're at the Savage, Savage River, River Camp Campground. Dawn and I are van camping deep inside the beautiful and wild Denali National Park. We hike the local trails. We find evidence of wildlife with every step. We have some fun finding some very interesting <laughs> tree formations. Get your mind out of the gutter. This might be our favorite camp spot in the entire park of Living My Alaska. We're going up a side of a mountain, see what there is to see. Let's go. This is the Savage Alpine Trail. Historic Savage Cabin is that way. We need to go check that out. Can you see the rabbit? That's a snowshoe hare with his spring and summer coat. Dawn is trying to sneak up and get a better photo. So Dawn is creeping around the other side and he's got his backside to Dawn. So she might get lucky because he's more worried about me. Oh, he spots her. One of the lessons about spotting wildlife in Alaska is to just be patient. Go slow and you'll be amazed at what your eye will catch if you just go slow enough and look around and be patient. The wildlife will show up. It's here. Okay, so the Savage Cabin is to the right. Toilets right there for the tourists as they come through in the buses. Savage Loop Trail near the Savage River Campground, Denali National Park has some fantastic historical plaques. This is a historical trail with an old homesteader's cabin. Technically not a homesteader's cabin, it's the trapper's cabin. That's the word I'm looking for. And it shows what life was like in 1922 in this area. So many of these plaques, appears they have access to journals of some of the people that were working here back in the 20s. And so many of these plaques have the journal of what's actually was happening during that time and what they were living through. And it's quite incredible to see. It's really great when you read these journals. They tell a little bit about what was going on, but they also kind of tell you what the weather was like that day, which is interesting. That's kind of what I put in my journal too. It's like he cut wood and worked around the cabin. It was warm and cloudy. November 10th, which is interesting. Look, on November 13th, made a trip to the creek and got 200 pounds of dog food, 10 miles. This is one of the original ranger cab cabins in the early part of the 1900s, right around 1917, 1920. And this is, can be found on the Savage River Loop across from the Savage River Campground in Nolly National Park. I'd love to share with you how this was built. They used whatever they had around as chinking. Chinking is what you put between these logs to seal out weather. And that is animal hair, burlap sack, mud, and moss from the trees and it looks a lot like it would have looked in the 1920s there's something else you guys need to see on the side of this house this is not some sort of construction project going wrong this is how we keep bears out of our cabins in winter these are nails driven in from the inside and what happens is when a bear comes up to this and he tries to put his paw in here to pull this shutter open he gets a handful of nail and that discourages him from attempting that. This is uh, still used in Alaska, all over Alaska, and it's a very wise thing. What we see is a little wood stove, a little bed in the corner, and a little bench as a table, a teapot, a wash basin, and that's it. And what it reminds me of is uh, Henry David Thoreau's Walden. What he needed inside was exactly what's in here. The tour bus has come through here. They open up the cabin and they take tourists through, but the cabin is locked. They don't allow us in there. And what's really neat over here is his old dog houses. And this is where the dog slept. We're about to head up the Savage Alpine Trail. It's four miles back to the Savage River from here. We probably won't do the whole thing because it goes over a very high peak, but we want to share with you how far we go. And this is what it looks like. So I want to point out the trail is open today, but there are some days it is not open. <laughs> <laughs> due to bear danger so we should be safe today but we still have a bear spray just in case hold that just in case because it says bear feeding on a kill may become agitated and aggressive just there he is close yeah so that means the bears have killed something like a caribou or a baby moose and they're eating it and you don't want to be around even something more grumpy than me over a plate of food is a bear we should be safe they tell you we should be at least 75 feet away from a caribou and 900 feet from a bear that's really funny but because a bear can cross 900 feet way quicker than you can imagine for all of you wanting to do this this is where we are this is where we're headed this is where we're camping okay let's go 
We're on the Savage Loop Trail and you can see the cottonwood trees. Cottonwood trees always grow by water and this is one of our favorite spots on this trail. It's such a scenic spot and it's so pretty with the sound of the water running through it. If you ever come here and want to spot wildlife on the side of the mountain, here's a like a little bit of a pro tip. On the brown part of that mountain in the distance is where you'd likely see caribou in the thicker brush and likely moose. Higher up, just before you see the rocks and at the top of that lowest hill you might see sheep and at the very top up there where there's still snow and it's nothing but rocks and pointed peaks that's most likely where you'll spot mountain goats and down in here is where you're likely to see a hungry grizzly bear looking for a girl in a blue shirt oh my god he scared us both that is a ptarmigan and he is so pretty We almost stepped on him. Let me get down there with him. He's kind of afraid of me. Don't be afraid, little ptarmigan. Everyone, that is a ptarmigan, ubiquitous all over Alaska in the high country. In the winter, they turn white. And in the summer, they've got this gorgeous golden brown and black plumage. His feet are covered in feathers to keep him warm in the winter because they live basically on the snow. He's probably looking for his girlfriend. And he's not happy about me being here. Another day in the life of living my Alaska Denali National Park. One of the things I like to do in Alaska is find a creek bed like this and walk through it. You never know what types of prints you'll find anywhere from bears to moose to other human footprints. This is a female moose and she's headed that way because this is the rear of her print, and that is the front. So our landscape is about to change. As we gain altitude, you can see we are in spruce forest. And as we go higher, we're going to get above the tree line here shortly into that alpine meadow. Let's see what this big print is right here. Oh, well, that's more moose. The moose love to eat these willows. And as you can see, all of the tops of these willows are cut off. Looks like Dawn is taking video and photos of something. Let's go see what she has. My wife loves wild animals. Everyone she sees, she wants to make her best friend. She's like Snow White and all the little birds in the Disney movies. She's actually trying to sing to him now in hopes that he'll come out of the bushes. Is he in there? He's in there. <laughs> I hear you calling to him. <laughs> trying. I don't speak fluent ptarmigan. No, I don't see him. He's right there. Gosh, they camouflage so well. Oh, I see him in there. <laughs> He's hiding from us. He doesn't like us very much. Okay, everyone, we're gonna let Mr. Ptarmigan do his best life today in Denali National Park. We're gonna head on up the trail. What is that? I'm kind of touch it. scat. I will not. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's full of hair and it's brown like it's moose hair. Oh, that definitely looks like a wolf right there. If anybody knows what kind of scat that is, please put it in the comments and let me know. I'm guessing it's wolf, but it could be bear. This is a wonderful trail and we're so happy to share with you. We use our camper van, we use fancy cameras, really great binoculars, but it's not about any of those things. What it's about is this. Those are just the tools that bring us to this experience and that's why we do this is to share this with you and any tool we can find that helps us improve the quality of this event we use so if you have some favorite tools that we don't have yet better shoes better clothing better binoculars let me know what you like to use maybe i'll use it on a future show and take your advice all right as you can see i'm huffing and puffing been sitting around all winter and that's not a good thing to do here's another marking on a tree and we have to assume this is moose that eat the bark in late winter little cottonwood forest there absolutely charming what's notable here is we are about to leave the forest areas i suppose this is considered boreal forest the trees are stunted because of the severe winters here and basically poor soil it's rock and sand but we're about to come out of that forest and into the highlands and this is considered to be up there would be the alpine section this is a good place to take out the binoculars and just stand here for a little while. Not only admire the beauty of the place, but see what you can spot in the bushes. If I find anything, 
I'll let you know. We're into the Alpine now. My wife is a Sound of Music movie fan, and every time we come to a place like this, she sings The Hills Are Alive with the Sound of Music. And I've been trying to catch her doing that for a decade on camera, and she continues to elude me. One of these days, we're gonna get her singing that on one of these mountaintops. Back this way is the Savage River and the Savage River Campground. The Savage River flows through that basin right out there. Mount McKinley, also known as Denali, is out here somewhere, but we cannot see it because of the clouds. Oh, that's so nice. I know. <laughs> I still remember that old joke about Charlotte. <laughs> Every time Charlotte would make a comment about one of the girls being healthy, Ashley would have a fit and be like, shit, I gotta lose some weight. <laughs> healthy equals fat in the South. I love these overlooks. Yeah. It's just, it's... The backdrop is just incredible. It is so fun to watch and I really enjoy going downhill too. <laughs> yes. I need to lose some weight and get in better shape, but I'm hungry, so let's go eat hot dogs. Uh -huh. so I, I see a problem there. So we're still hiking the Savage Alpine Loop Trail near the Savage River Campground. And what I'd love to show you here is above us is the Alpine and the Tundra River bottom there. And we're headed back into the spruce forest and a stand of cottonwoods right here. Well, well, we spotted our first bear in Denali National Park. Yes, <laughs> ferocious and scary. I'm not sure why she's hauling her teddy bear out here. Maybe like Dawn said, maybe it's something emotional, maybe it's a memento, someone she's lost. I didn't want to stop and ask her. It's none of my business. But we can say we saw a bear. <laughs> Denali National Park, you spot all sorts of wildlife, some more curious than others. All right, I'm tired and I'm hungry, let's go. What in the world is that? So it's a burl, just sit on it. I will not tell you what it looks like. Let me demonstrate what I think it looks like. In the 21st century, I can identify however I want. <gasps> <laughs> yes, yes or, you can. Okay, I can be a switch, I can identify this way too. We wish. Don't, <laughs> you wish. Get your mind out of the gutter. This this is a beautiful piece of wood that could be turned into a decorative artwork in our home. Yes. It won't be, but it could be. Oh, shame on you. Okay, this is the Savage River Campground in Denali National Park. And we have a favorite spot that is at the back of the campground. Not much running for running water here. It's just vault toilets that look like that. There's no power for your RV here, so you're boondocking it. So we'll go straight and see if our favorite spot is open. Is this it here to the right? This is, it, is this right one? Here. Okay, I think we've made it. Savage River Campground. We found a spot. We're gonna go make it our own. Claim our spot. Site 18B. Greetings from the Savage River Campground in Denali National Park. And this is our home for the next few days. We've got a great clear view for Starlink. No trees in the way. It's a good spot. It's quiet back here. It's a really good spot. Look how much we have to ourselves. Yeah. We're making a fire, getting ready for dinner. We're having Cornish hens for dinner on an open fire. But right now we've got to cook down this fire so we have enough hot coals. I don't want to eat a smoked grouse over a spruce wood. That won't taste very good. Thank you. What are you drinking? Moonshine? Not moonshine. Oh. I've got some dinner for you. Cornish game hens. So you want to try yours on a foil packet? Yeah. I'm going to try mine straight up. Give it a shot, whatever Put you it think. Up here. Let's see what happens right there. Ooh. 
and now we wait and get smoked. Now we wait. Does the chicken need flipping? I think it does. Oh, that's look how delicious that looks. Oh, I hope it's good because it looks mostly burnt. <laughs> I know. So proud of us for eating salad. <laughs> we had a vegetable. It sure is sizzling. Definitely so hard. Let's get yours off of here. Off. I thought it was going to melt the plate. <laughs> we'll let them rest a little while. A little bird leg here. I'm gonna be careful with oh. it because I may have to fold it back up. It may not be ready. It smells good. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's delicious. It's done. Put him on the fire without the to brown it. It looks entirely disgusting. Does it? Yeah. <laughs> but if you brown it now, it'll look nice and maybe. It tastes charred. Yeah, it's definitely cooked. Yeah. You want to taste? This is the breast meat. If you want a bite. Tastes like chicken. Juicy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, they're on fire. Smoky over here. Oh. Why don't they make a non flammable marshmallow? Hershey's, um, graham cracker, marshmallow. Oh, both of them in there? That's a lot. Like that. That's how I do mine. And then I go ahead and make another one. Wow, that's fancy. Three big s'mores. Yes. You're going to eat all three of those? No, I made you a, a second one. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's, that's the last one I made, so that sugar. one needs to sit. Well, okay. you know, it's vacation. Eat it. Is it delicious? Mm -hmm. Is it scrumptious? Mm -hmm. It was worth eating dinner for. <laughs> worth making a happy plate. It's the whole reason I ate dinner. S'mores with living my Alaska inside Denali National Park. Not a bad way to spend an evening. Thank you for joining us. More coming tomorrow. Peel. My hands are slippery here. I don't know if I can do any better. Now the packet is all slippery. I bet those birds in the trees are like, oh my god, they're cooking us. Well, I've had better dinners, but I've not had better scenery. Right. You like it? C'est bon. C'est bon. C'est bon. Well, grandmother used to say, Mmm, ça c'est bon. I mean, so, so good? It means that's good. My grandmother used to say, mm, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching as we hunt, we harvest, we homestead, and we adventure our way through the last frontier. Please like, subscribe, and share our videos because we have so much more to share with you as we show you what it means when we say we are living my Alaska. See you next time.